one of the most impactful learning moments for me was taking a workshop at MIT Sloan in 2014, which tremendously influenced my thinking. I went to this specific class because it was taught by Dr. Steven Spear. He is famous for many things, but he is probably most famous for writing one of the most downloaded Harvard Business Review papers of all time. This was in 1999, called Decoding the DNA of the Toyota Production System. This was, in part, based on his doctoral dissertation that he did at the Harvard Business School, <laughs> and in support of that, he worked on the manufacturing plant floor of a Tier 1 Toyota supplier for six months. And since then, he's extended his work beyond just high-repetition manufacturing to engine design at Pratt & Whitney, to the building of the safety culture at Alcoa, and to how we can build genuinely safe healthcare systems. Recently, he was part of a U.S. Navy initiative to create high-velocity learning across all aspects of the enterprise. I've had the privilege of having weekly working calls with Steve since January, and my goal was to try to understand how he views the world. And I've learned that it's through the lens of structure and dynamics. So structure is how we organize our teams and defining what are the allowed interactions between them, in other words, the interfaces. And dynamics is almost everything else. Is there a system where weak signals of failure are amplified so they can be acted upon before they cause a disaster? Or is there an environment where these failure signals are extinguished and dampened entirely? Is there a system where everyone gets fast feedback on their work? Uh, or is there no feedback at all? I've asked Steve to teach us what we've learned together, and I trust you will find it as riveting as I do. Here's Steve. Gene, I got a question. Why? And I, I know in 2020, the question why is a big question about a lot of things, but let me narrow it down and package it a little bit. Gene, why do organizations exist? And you're probably going, oh man, why did I bring this guy into my conference? He teaches at the MIT Sloan School of Management. Wouldn't he know why organizations exist? And you're probably thinking to yourself too, it's like, one, you have students paying tuition to a guy who doesn't know why organizations exist and he's teaching about management and duh, everyone knows the answer. Why do organizations exist? Because someone's got to make planes, trains, and automobiles. And yet, yes, that's true, Gene, but a little bit of foreshadowing on this. Let me tell you what's important in an organization. Gene, it's relationships. Relationships are what are so important in an organization. And I'm not talking any kind of that hanky-panky stuff. We're going we're gonna to get into what I really mean by relationships here. All right. But let's come back to what you said was uh, planes, trains, and automobiles. That's fine, right? Someone's got to make a plane, train, automobile, uh, frosting for your cake, et cetera, et cetera. But let me ask you, where does that stuff come from? It's like you just go boom, 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 boom. Give me a plane, give me a train, give me an automobile. I don't think so. Because first you got to start out figuring out who actually has a need. And that's a problem to be solved because a lot of people in the world and you got to figure out who you're going to focus on. And then when you figure out, oh, these are the people I'm going to focus on, you got to figure out, well, actually, what's the nature of their needs? Why do they have these concerns? And then you have to design a solution you know, what do you actually need to deliver them that will deal with all right, some more problems? And then when you have a design, it's not like at that point you give them a plane, train, automobile, or the frosting for their cake. You got to figure out how you're actually going to make and deliver the thing, whether it's a thing physically or figuratively, whatever it is, you have to figure it out. And when you solve all those problems, yes, eventually, there's the plane, the train, and the automobile. Now, you might be saying, yeah, yeah all right, Steve, fine, fine, fine. Yeah, you got to solve problems. But then, you know, you're really in the business of delivering planes, trains, and automobiles. Not so fast, mister, because here's the thing. Once you solve one problem, you got new problems coming back. It's just problem after problem after problem. And you want proof of this? Mr. Walt Disney. So think about Mr. Walt Disney, right? What's the first problem he's trying to solve for? He's trying to give people the happiest place on earth. And it wasn't like he pulled it, reached into his pocket, pulled it out and said, oh, here's the happiest place on earth. That took a lot of creativity to figure out what Disneyland would work, look like. And... um. You could argue he actually solved that problem because people started showing up. And guess what? They showed up with their kids and their kids are going, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I want something to eat. All right, boom. New problem. You got to solve. Now you got to figure out how you're going to feed all those people who are showing up at the happiest place on earth. Because not exactly fully happy if they're all hungry. But now you think about the Disney folks. They did a pretty good job. Happiest place on earth. They're feeding you well. And then people say, hey, honey, you know, you know this is really a very happy place. 
But, you know, we got here in the morning. We're leaving the evening. I'd really like to stay for a couple of days. New problem that's got to be solved. You got to figure out the hospitality so people can have the happiest place on earth for more than more than a few hours. Now, you get the happiest place on earth with the food is good and you can stay multiple days. Guess what? It gets crowded. You got a new problem. Why am I waiting so long for everything? You got to solve that problem too. And our buddies at Disney, what have they done? They came up with these magic bracelets. So wherever you go, boom, exactly what you want, when you want it, when you need it is there. No waiting. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. All right. So anyway, why do organizations exist? To solve problems so they can deliver their planes, trains, and automobiles. And oh, by the way, Gene, it never ends. It's just problem after problem after problem after problem. All right, now let's take this a step further. If you want thing, all right, so Gene's got to solve a problem. Ann's got to solve a problem. Jess and Aaron have to solve their problems. But it, it, it's not so simple, right? Because what's the deal with the problems? The problems are hard problems, right? And so it's not just solving problems. We got to be solving problems collaboratively, big problems, big problems with people working on it together. Now, anyway, let, let's step back. Gene, if you think about... um. My presentation is the last couple of uh, gatherings we've had, right? I talked about a couple of times ago, the United States Navy having this uh, come from behind victory against the Japanese Navy at Midway in June 1942. And we said, well, where did that come from? We said, well, you know, the Navy's in the business of uh, beating Japan in, in 1942. We said, well, yeah, but the root, the root, not, yeah, I guess the root cause, the root cause. 